hello and welcome again so now we're gonna start a, a new topic which is uh, the number theory for public key cryptography and this is the kind of mathematics uh, we need to go over so we can actually understand what the public key cryptography is uh, because remember we are now dealing with uh, public keys and private keys those keys uh, will actually be strongly related to this topic of number theory now number theory is just the study of the integers in the elementary part of number theory so what we're going to do here is maybe in the next videos we're going to discuss the basic properties that we need for for public key cryptography that all of them come from from this number theory uh, part which is part of mathematics okay so let's start with some definitions so um, probably most of you already know what that is so we start with natural numbers and just to introduce some notation so we're going to denote the natural numbers by this symbol right here is an n with a bar here at the beginning so that denotes the natural numbers the natural numbers is just a set or a collection of numbers that is just one two three four and so on so that they're whole numbers not fractions no rationals just whole numbers and we're gonna start at, at one now some books might start counting from zero uh, we're not gonna take that approach here. It really depends on whoever you read. So we're gonna just start the numbers, the natural numbers at one to so the collection of all these numbers. And these numbers are usually used for counting. So this is the number you, you count with. So it's one object, two objects, three objects, and so on and so forth. So those are the natural numbers that are used for counting. Now we also have the integers here, which is actually the basic study of, of uh, elementary number theory. And we're going to use again notation, so the integers, we're going to denote them by this letter Z with a bar here. So every time you see me writing down this one, I'm referring to this collection here. The collection of 0, the positive and the negative 1, the positive and the negative 3, 2, and so on and so forth. So basically the integers are these natural numbers with 0 and all the negatives. That's what the integers are. So it's an infinite collection of numbers this is also an infinite collection of numbers so we are just doing this because i want to introduce some notation so whenever you see me writing down this n or this z here this symbol i by n i mean this collection and by z with this symbol i mean this whole collection that is over here all right so so one of the import one of the first things that you do when you study a uh, number theory is to introduce the concept of divisibility the visibility is something that you already know, but we're going to write it down here in a formal way. So the definition, the formal definition of divisibility is like this. If you have two integers, A and B, I'm going to call my integers A and B. So here, this A and this B, they're going to come from this collection here. It's one of these elements that is in this list. So if I have A and B here, the two integers, we're going to say that A divides the number B if this is true, if you can express B in this way is equal to K times A for some K in Z, which Z means this collection here, this collection Z that is right here. Now, this might be a little bit cryptic for you, but basically what that means is just that B is a multiple of A. So that's what this expression here, A divides B means. So A divides B means that B is a multiple of a which is can be expressed in a mathematical way like this b equals to ka for some k in c and it's important that this k has to be in z if it is not in z here then uh, if it is for example k is a fraction then that won't be divisibility so now we're going to use some notation and i might use this notation later so i'm going to introduce it now instead of writing down this whole thing here that says a divides b I'm just going to write down A, a vertical bar, B. Now, this means exactly what it is over here. So, this A bar B just means A divides B. So, this is an statement. It's not a computation. It's an statement. And I'm going to emphasize that later. Now, so let's see, for example, uh, here, some uh, things of divisibility. So, when I write down three the vertical line six, I mean that three divide six and that is true why because six is an integer multiple 
of 3. As you can see here, 6, I can express it as 2 times 3. So in this case, the value of k is this 2 that you have here. So this will be the value of k. This is my b, and this is my a. Similar for the other one, it is also true that negative 4 divides 12. And the reason for that is that's because I can express 12, this number, as a multiple of negative 4. So I can express 12 as negative 3 times negative 4. In this case, this number, that the negative 3 is my k, and this will be my a, and this will be my b. So very simple things here, this is just introducing some notation, and I'm sure you have seen this uh, many times. Now, so one uh, remark that I had to put in here is to nev non never confuse this notation with this notation here. This A vertical bar B is a statement, is saying that A divides B. Now that statement may be true or may be false. If I write down, for example, 4 divides 15, that's a false statement. I still can write down that and I, well, of course, that will be false. On the other hand, this one that is right here, B, this vertical, uh, the horizontal line A, that is just a number. So it's the difference between these two things. And the reason I'm explaining this is because sometimes some books will actually use this line here a little bit in diagonal. So it will look like a fraction, but it's actually not. It's just an statement. So this is an statement, A divides B, and this is just a number. And just to clarify there, there uh, the, the, the two different concepts here. All right. So sometimes you want to know when some number is divisible by some other. So I'm going to write down some here, some divisibility criteria. And of course, there are many, many of them. And there is no time for us to actually be covering all of this. We're going to introduce this one only uh, just to make some of the computation that we might do later a little bit easier. So all of these divisibility criteria that I'm going to talk about here are all in base 10. So I'm assuming that the number is written in base 10, not binary or hexadecimal or any other base, just base 10. So we're going to say, and these are properties of the natural numbers. So a number is divisible by, if it's divisible by 2, that means that the last digit in base 10, of course, is either 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So basically what I'm saying here is that the number is an even number. So divisible by 2 means it's even, or in other words, that the last digit is one of these five possibilities that are here. So it's an even number. Now, three is one number is divisible by the number three. It's going to be divisible by this number if you sum the digits, and that sum turns out to be divisible by three. Now, you can apply this uh, repeatedly. So, if you don't remember, if you don't know what the result, if the sum of the digits is still a large number, you can still sum the digits again, sum and sum it until you get to a final answer that you can see that is divisible by three or not. So, that's a very uh, Useful or useful fact. Now, divisibility by 4, in this case, a number will be divisible by 4 if the last two digits are divisible by 4. It means that the number formed by the last two digits will be divisible by the number 4. And just to see the last one here, a number is divisible by 5 if the last digit in base 10 is 0 or 5. So those are some examples of of properties of divisibility. Of course, there are criteria for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, all of them. Very, very good criteria, but we're not going to talk about those in here. So let me uh, explain here, or let me uh, give you some examples. So 2 divides 56, 50, and the reason for that is I don't actually have to go and divide in my calculator or in computer to actually find that out. I just have to look at the last digit. If the last digit is an even number, so 0, 2, 4, 6 of 8, then then I know exactly that 2 divides this is 56, 50, so I don't have to do any computations. Now for the next number, uh, here for the next statement, and this one is saying that 3 divides this number that is right here. Now one thing that you might do is maybe use your calculator, but that's not really uh, something that is the quickest uh, way to do it because you have to of course type this number if you realize what this number is uh, and the criteria for three is you add all the digits so if you add all the digits here 
the zeros that are there are not gonna make any difference. So you basically are adding one and two. So one plus two is three. And because three is divisible by three, then the original number, which is right here, is also divisible by three. Now divisibility by four, this is an example of divisibility by four. So I can say four divides this number right here. And the only thing that I have to check is the last two digits, so 28. And four divides this number only because the last two digits are 28, so four I know divides 28, which I can check very easily because, uh, of course, uh, 28 is a multiple of four because seven times four is 28. And just the last example, divisibility by five is probably it's pretty easy also. So I'm saying that five divides this number here and it does because the last digit is zero. If there was a five also, it would be divisible by, by five. So that's, those are some of the criteria and I'm sure you know some of others uh, criteria for divisibility, but we're not gonna worry about those in here. I might mention maybe later if we need them, but for now, let's just be content with what we have here. All right, so an important concept also in number theory, which is actually one of the most uh, important concepts, is the concept of a prime number. So we're gonna say that an integer means in that collection, zero plus or minus one plus or minus two and so on, is a prime number if it has exactly two positive divisors. Now, I know that you know the definition that is divisible by the number in itself. This is an equivalent definition. The definition that a, something is a prime number, an integer is a prime number if it has exactly two positive divisors. So let's see an example. Is one a prime number? Well, under this definition or the other definition, then one will not be a prime number. And the reason for that is because one has only one positive divisor, namely the number itself. It doesn't have any other divisor. So one will not be a prime number because you have to have exactly two divisors. Now two will be a prime number. And the reason for that is because if you look at what positive numbers divide two, there are only two of them. One's divi one divides two and two divides two. There are only, there are exactly two positive divisors then it's a prime number. You have other divisors that are not positive. So for example, negative one also divides two and negative two also divides two. But for the definition, we are only looking at the positive divisors. So we have exactly two. Now three is also a prime number. And again, the same reason because it has only two divisors, which is one is a divisor and three is a divisor. So any anytime I mention divisor here, I mean positive divisor. And four, of course, will not be a prime number. And the reason for that is because four has too many divisors. So if you look at the divisors of four, we have one is a divisor, two is a divisor, and three is a divisor, I mean positive divisor. So we have three positive divisors. Therefore, uh, four is not a prime number. And you can continue on like that, checking all the numbers and see which one is prime, which one is not. There are algorithms to check when a number is prime or not. And we might discuss those algorithms later, which are important in applied cryptography. This is actually one of the most important uh, uh, things, not only in uh, number theory, but also in cryptography, the concept of prime or having large primes. Now, there is an important theorem is, and I'm gonna finish with this, is the, due to Euclid. It's very old, it's 300 uh, BC, and the, Theorem says basically just that there are infinite and many primes. So the list of primes will never end. So it's infinite. It's a subset or is a sub list of the natural numbers and it will be infinite. Now the prime numbers in here, we're gonna consider prime numbers that are positive for the most part. Of course, there are prime numbers that are uh, negative because of the definition allows me to have negative uh, prime numbers, but I'm not going to worry about those. We're going to just look at the positive prime numbers. In any case, there are infinite many of them. So this, 
because here I have a list of some of the prime numbers and remember this list here is an infinite list so 2 is prime, 3 is prime, 4 of course is not a prime so 5 is 7, 11, 13, 17 and so on and so forth so basically what this theorem is saying is that there are infinitely many primes in the integers positive this is a list of the positive primes here so I'm going to spot the video now. In the next video, we'll continue with some of the basic concepts of number theory that we will need for uh, the public key cryptography. So I will see you in the next video.